What's up and welcome to our youth service. We are so glad that you're joining with us. From wherever you are watching this, we are so glad that we can gather together virtually and we can be a part of what God has for us. Now you're gonna see a message in a few minutes and then after that, there's some discussion questions that you can either talk with, talk about with the people around you or you can just journal about yourself. We're really excited about what God is gonna do through this message in you. Thanks a lot for joining us. Hey, what is up? Uh, we are kicking off a new series that we are calling Unchained. Not because like we wear super sick chains and we're not wearing them anymore, but we're talking about a dude in the Bible uh, who actually was thrown in prison and he wrote these letters whilst in prison, which is crazy and would have been terrible. His hands were probably like bound and he probably had a guy like whatever they was talking to. That's not important. Anyways, as we're talking through this series, uh, one of the things that we're looking at, what we're gonna be talking about today, is what do you do when, I mean, just to be frank, like what do you do when your situation sucks? Like I know life can sometimes be really awesome and it feels like we're on cloud nine. I'm sure all of you feel that, especially in the season that we're in where you're like, everything's perfect in my life, I love it. But what about the times when your situation isn't going well? Like Paul, who wrote this letter from prison, his situation was clearly not going well. I mean, to be in jail would be terrible and you would be like super limited on what you could do. You can't play Fortnite anymore. I know all of you still play that because it's super in right now, but like you can't do anything while you're there. But Paul was able to find a way to actually endure this really terrible situation and also uh, find joy, like finding the good side. Which by the way, do you know anyone who's just like super positive and no matter what happens, they're just like, well, I mean, things could get better. And you're just like, dude, can you shut up? It just, this sucks right now. I don't need that right now. But Paul, technically, he was that guy and he's writing this letter to the church, which today he's writing it to us. We, we're supposed to read this letter and go like, oh, this is what Paul wanted me to know. And I think it's so easy to just get really down and, and feel really deflated when our situation is not going the way that we think that it should go. When, when life starts to fall apart, when things get broken, when things are just not going how we hoped that they would go, and our situation just sucks. It's easy for us to get down and deflated and just go like, dude, I don't even care anymore. I don't even wanna be here anymore. I don't care about this, I don't care about that. I'm just, whatever, life, life is terrible. My life is terrible, I'm done. It's easy to be there. In fact, I've been there before, and I'm gonna get to that in a second. But as Paul's writing this to us, as he's talking about finding joy while he's in prison, he has this to say, and this is in Philippians chapter one, this is verse 12 through 14. And Philippians is a letter that he wrote to the church in Philippi. It's not like, whatever. Uh, he says this in verse 12, he says, now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me, he means like being thrown in jail, has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard, throughout the whole jail, throughout the whole prison, and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ, that I am in prison for Jesus. And because of my chains, because I'm in jail, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. That's insane. He's saying because of his terrible situation, it's actually serving to advance the gospel. When Paul's telling us to look at, to, to find joy in a terrible situation, he's saying, look at how much my terrible situation is actually helping to advance the gospel. Look at how much more it's actually spreading the love of Jesus. Because I'm in jail, because I'm in a terrible situation, look at how much more it's doing for other people. That is incredibly difficult for me to wrap my mind around, I'm sure for you, because you're like, how could my terrible situation be advancing the gospel of Jesus? How could my terrible situation be actually helping other people grow closer to Jesus? And I think what he's saying here and, and what we need to learn from this is that we have to change our focus. We have to change our focus instead of just focusing on like, 
gosh, my parents are getting divorced. My life, is it sucks right now. There's no way that I can recover from this. Uh, I failed a class and now I have to take summer school and there's just no way that I can rebound from this. It's gonna affect my life forever. Uh, I have, I don't have a boyfriend, I don't have a girlfriend, I've been single for so long, I'm unlovable, this situation sucks, there's no way that I could ever come out of this. Uh, the new PS6 is gonna come out at some point in time and I'm not gonna be able to get that because I don't have enough money and my family this or whatever it is, my situation is just terrible. I lost a game in Fortnite, I don't know what it is, Fortnite, um, I feel like I have to say that a bunch of times. But whatever it is, Paul is saying we have to change our focus. Instead of just thinking about how terrible things are, we have to open our perspective and think about how is God using this? How can God use this? And I know, I know that sounds so churchy and so uh, like whatever, not real, unattainable. It sounds fake to just say like, well, look at the bright side because Jesus is doing good works. But I've seen this be true. I've seen this actually happen in my life. When we talk about our situations being terrible, there, there's been so many actually in my life that have been so horrible. And I've actually seen how God has worked through that. Uh, there, there's been a long stretch of my life that I have battled with depression. And a couple of years ago, just before COVID, I was in probably the darkest period of my life, the darkest time of my life, just carrying this weight of depression. And I just felt terrible all the time. I felt like I had nothing to offer anyone else. I felt like I had nothing to offer myself. And I remember praying like, God, can you just, can you just take this away? This sucks, man. Like, can you just remove this? Have you ever prayed a prayer like that where you're like, God, seriously, you're all knowing, you're all powerful, but bro, you're doing nothing about this. Like, can you just remove this? But it didn't work like that. God didn't just go like, oh yeah, sorry, Jake, totally forgot about you, let me just boop, take that depression away. It, it didn't work like that. It actually was something that I endured for a really long time. And it actually was something that came back during COVID. And it's something that still has moments that comes back in my life. And I have to learn how to manage that. I think that's the, the perspective change, is instead of changing your perspective of the situation you're in isn't just going like, it's not that bad, just forget about it and move on to the positive. It's, it's really saying, take a really good look at, at what the situation is that you're in. Like take a step back and, and look at where you're at. Look at what's happening around you. And in my situation, as I took a step back, I was actually able to see that I wasn't the only person who struggled with depression. It wasn't just me. It feels like it's just you. When you're going through something, you feel like I'm the only person on the planet who is having a terrible week, a terrible month, a terrible day, terrible year, whatever. My life sucks, I'm the only one. It feels like that. But as I took a step back and, and was able to change my perspective, I saw that there were so many people around me that were dealing with that. And what God was showing me in that perspective change, while I was felt like I was in chains, just locked to this depression thing, was that he wanted to use me to help me manage that so that I could also help other people manage that because I wasn't the only one. As I changed my perspective, I actually was able to help other people see how Jesus was still working in their lives because I was able to see how Jesus was still working in mine. I was able to say, you know what? This isn't the like, ideal, <laughs> but I still know that God's working through this. And I was able to help people even in my lowest of low places, I was able to help people take a step back and acknowledge like, I see you. I see what you're going through. I see how hard it is. I know how hard it is. But I know that Jesus is there with you. He doesn't just magically like, boop, remove it. But Jesus says, I'm here. As Paul is in prison, he knew that Jesus was with him. He knew that he wasn't alone. He knew that he wasn't going through it by himself. And that perspective changed to say, I know Jesus is with me. That means I know that Jesus is with you. And through that, I was actually able to, I guess in the Bible they would say minister, but I was able to talk to people about Jesus in the worst situation that I had been in in a long time. I was able to share the gospel and spread Jesus's love through the terrible time that I was going through. That's the perspective change that Paul wants us to have is he says, while I'm still in chains, the gospel is actually being spread in a greater way 
because of my bad situation, I'm actually able to help a lot more people see the light and the love of Jesus. That sounds churchy, I know, but I'm telling you, it's, it's real. It's, it's the most real thing that happens. It's like, I think uh, when we have a terrible thing happen to us or we're in a really sucky situation, it, it's kind of like for, for high schoolers, for those of you that are, that are driving or about to start driving or thinking of driving someday, it's like you're driving a car by yourself and you get a flat tire on the side of the road. Like maybe you're on the freeway, you're super far away from anyone who could help you. Maybe your phone's even dead, so you can't even call someone to help you. You know you have a spare tire in the back of your car, but you're like, I've literally never changed this. I can't watch a YouTube video on how to do it. I just have to do it myself now. You have a flat tire, you're stuck. You feel like there's no way out of this and you're by yourself. And you have choices. You can take a step back and realize the situation that you're in and you can think of like, how can you get out of this situation? Well, in order to see the joy, in order to like find peace, it's gonna take letting go of uh, feeling inconvenienced by the situation that you're in. And you actually have to put a lot of work into learning how to change that tire. You can do it, you can get out of it. Or your other choice is you can just say, you know what, I I'm giving up. There's no way I can recover from this. There's no way I'm gonna make it out of this. So I'm done. I'm just gonna sit here in my car in 105 degree summer, because that's apparently how hot it is these days. I'm gonna melt in this car and, and I'm just gonna give up. But what Paul is saying is change your focus. Change your focus and actually put the work into to carrying on through that, enduring that, because there is going to be good that comes from your situation. The next th thing that he says is in Philippians uh, 1, verse 18, and he says, and I will continue to rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. What has happened to me will turn out for, for my good, but also your good. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed but will have sufficient courage so that now as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. And Paul's super extreme. He's like, I could die today and it would glorify God. I don't know a lot of people that would say that because we're like, I wanna live a long life and I wanna have a bunch of Bitcoin and I wanna be like super rich. But he's like, I, I could die today and things would be better because I would at least be closer to Jesus and it would at least bring other people closer to Jesus by how I've followed him through these horrible times. And in this, I think uh, what Paul is saying is that we have to figure out how to see and acknowledge who God is. Instead of just thinking about like, oh, no one cares about me and my situation's terrible. And, and for me, like I'm carrying this depression and why isn't it going away? Acknowledging who God is and, and being able to praise him for who he is will help us to find the hope there is to find in Jesus. The hope that is in Jesus, we can find that through knowing who God is, remembering who he is, and actually praising him through our horrible times. That sounds insane, again, I know, it's crazy. A lot of the things that we're asked to do as followers of Jesus, as Christians, seem so backwards to the way that the rest of the world works. And I think that's on purpose, actually. But if we can see that just because our situation sucks, it doesn't mean that God sucks. We might feel that way at first, where we're like, God, dude, you're, you're not doing anything. But the reality is, God actually knows what you're going through. Like I said, Jesus is there with you. Jesus was there with Paul. And if we can worship him separated from our selfishness, it sounds crazy, it sounds mean, but when you're going through something terrible and you're only focused on like, me, myself, and I, and this is so terrible for me, we lose sight of the bigger picture, and the, bigger, the biggest picture there is, is God. That even though he knows you're going through this, he has a plan. He does want to redeem you. Like Paul says, through this you will find your deliverance. You will be delivered from this, but it's not just gonna mean that you're gonna get out of whatever situation you're in and go back to the way things were. You're actually gonna learn and grow closer to God through this. It's gonna be the experience that you gain by having faith, by seeking hope in the worst of times. 
because it's easy to have hope when things are like going okay or actually going great. You're like, yeah, I'm hopeful because this is happening, this is happening, and I can't wait for this to happen. But then you get a flat tire and you're like, there's no way that I can recover from this. There's no way that I can make it out of this. But if we can praise God for who he is, what he sees about us, the, the value that he sees in our lives, what he's been doing, not just for us personally, but how he wants to spread his love to the whole entire world. If we can step away from our selfishness and into the selfless place to acknowledge that, yeah, my situation sucks, but I gotta remember who God is. He's not a God that's just gonna leave me stranded here on the side of the road. He's not a God that just doesn't care about what I'm going through. He's a God that loves me, that fights for me, that wants to redeem me. And through my depression, I, I saw that. I saw how God was still calling me to be his son, calling me to be someone who he loved, calling me to, to do more than I felt like I was capable of doing through my darkest of times. And it was through that that I actually learned so much more about God and so much more, uh, I gained so much more experience on how to have hope and how to have faith, on how to praise God through the worst of times. Hope can, can keep us going. There have been uh, like a lot of studies done on um, people who are in, who are like really injured. Um, I think one of them was for like World War I or something and they, they did a study on all these soldiers who were severely injured in one room and all these soldiers who were severely injured in another. And in one room, they continued to, to share with them like the hope that they had that they're gonna make it out of this. And those soldiers recovered, and they actually ended up doing so much better because they clinged, they, they clung to, to hope. They had this hope, they had something else in mind that was beyond where they're at right now. They had something else in mind that was in the future that didn't leave them stuck where they were at. And the soldiers who didn't have that hope, who just focused on like, I'm never, like maybe some dude lost an arm, he's like, I'm never gonna be able to text with this arm again. I'm never gonna be able to play Fortnite correctly again, and whatever, those guys, they didn't do very well. They actually suffered more. A lot of them died because they had no hope. And if we can remember that having hope in Jesus, the guy who's here with you right now, literally right now, who wants what's best for your life but ultimately wants to spread his love to this world, that hope will carry us through whatever it is we're going through. That's what we need to focus on. That's how we need to shift our perspective. And then I think uh, the opposite of that is that we need to make sure that we don't fall off the wagon when things go terrible in our lives. It, it can be so easy to be a Christian, to be a follower of Jesus when things are going great, because we feel like God's providing for me, this is amazing, I feel so strong in the Lord, my faith is awesome, but then something goes wrong and it's just like, well, whatever, I don't think I can make it through this. So what does it matter? I, I don't know if I care anymore. I don't even know if my faith really changed anything. I don't even know if believing in God is doing me any good because now things aren't that great, which is ridiculous, but that's a human thing. That's a human response. But if we look at the life of Paul and actually all of the disciples, they went through so many terrible situations. And if it was true that if God allowed you to go through something terrible, that that meant he didn't actually care about you that much, that would mean he didn't care about the disciples. That would mean he doesn't care about Paul being in jail. That would mean he doesn't care about whatever it is you're going through, but that's just not true. He does care, he is there. He wants you to set your eyes on him and the hope that, that we have in him, the hope of Jesus Christ, that he has redeemed us, that he has saved us, that he has delivered us. He actually, Jesus uh, actually lived a perfect life so that he could carry the weight of our sin, of our mistakes, of our regrets, of our pain, of our anxiety, of our depression, of all the things that are gonna happen in our life. He could carry all of that and bring it to the cross and then he could die with it and be uh, brought back to life so that we could also be brought back to life with him renewed, restored, not chained to our sin, not chained to our pain, not chained to the, the things that are going on in our lives. He wants to redeem us from that. He already has. We just have to remember that. You're like, oh yeah, Jesus actually, he's already set me free from all that stuff. I don't need to be tied down to this. When you're feeling lonely, when you're feeling deflated, depressed, when you feel like you're out of gas, when you feel like you have a flat tire, 
and you're just like, there's no way out of this, the worst thing that we can do is fall off the wagon. In my life, I went from so many seasons of trying to heal or, or resolve all of my pain with drugs and alcohol. If I was having a really bad week, I would drink a lot because it, it just made me feel better. And I do air quotes because it didn't actually. If I was having a, a really tough month, I would just smoke weed and I would be like, this is making me feel better. But it didn't actually. I was trying to numb it. It was like putting your life on pause. I don't wanna deal with this terrible thing, so I'm just gonna put my life on pause. But you're not pausing it. You're, you're digging a deeper hole. You're falling off of the wagon. And instead of having faith, instead of looking to the hope of Jesus, you're choosing to give up. And I'm here to say, and, and this isn't like a great thing to say, but I'm here to tell you, that is an option you have. You can just give up. But I also wanna tell you, don't. Don't give up. Paul could have given up in jail. But look at all the letters that we have from him. He's written so much of the New Testament, and that has actually inspired and encouraged and impacted so many people's lives to follow Jesus, to love him, to accept the love Jesus has for them. Paul has influenced us today, me, myself. I've learned so many things from Paul's faith, from Paul's hope, because he didn't give up. Imagine what God wants to do through you, through your life, in the middle of your tough situation. Like when I was going through depression, I could have just quit. I literally could have quit ministry. I could have said, there's no way I can be a pastor. I don't have anything to offer anybody. I could have done that. But I found hope through what Jesus was trying to do in my life. And it wasn't about me. It wasn't about Jake being better or healthier or more influential. It was about Jesus. It was just that I knew how much Jesus loved me. I know how much he wants the whole world to know about him. So I'm gonna choose to find hope during a time when my situation sucks. We have to learn to change our perspective. We can't fall off the bandwagon. We can't, we can, not the bandwagon, we can't fall off the wagon. By the way, bandwagon, I'm a, I'm a bandwagon Warriors fan. I just, well, actually, it depends on if they're doing good. We can't fall off the wagon. We can't just choose to make bad decisions just because bad things are happening in our life. During those times, we have to change our perspective, take a step back and see that this is bigger than us. God cares about you individually and personally, but he also calls us to be lights to this world. When you have a light in your house, it isn't just for the one person who's in your house. It's for everyone to be able to like see things during the nighttime. It, the, the light that Jesus wants us to be is, is a light that helps the whole world see the hope of Jesus. He knows we're not perfect. He knows how terrible things can be for us. He's not asking you to be perfect. He's not asking you to be like Mr. Sunshine when, you're, when your situation's horrible. When I was going through depression, I wasn't just like, everything's great. It was just like, yeah, this is hard. But I wanna choose to, to see who God is, to praise God, to worship God through this time because that's teaching me to, to put on this spare tire so I can keep going, to not be stuck. We can choose to be stuck, but I'm praying and I'm hoping that you don't choose to be stuck. I'm praying that you all watching this will rally together as a family and as a community, not, not choosing to do it on your own, not feeling like you have to carry this weight and this faith and find hope by yourself, but actually finding that what God called us to as lights to this world was to be united as a family, to help our brothers and sisters get through this, to encourage them, to inspire them, to pick them up when they're down, to pray for them, to help us change our perspective, to help us worship God for who he is, and to not be stuck in this rut so that we can find joy even when our situation sucks. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for bringing all of us here, for everyone who's watching, for everyone who's listening, even for those who aren't, God. I pray that you would challenge us, give us the courage to not just endure situations that are terrible, but that you would actually help grow our faith, that you would actually help grow us closer towards you, that we would learn more about who you are, even when things are terrible, and that you would help us take a step back and realize that you're trying to do something so much bigger than just what's happening in our lives at that moment. God, I pray that you would give us the courage to be lights to this world as we learn how to endure things that are tough 
that we could share that with the rest of the world. And we can bring your love to literally everyone. No matter what's going on in their lives, no matter where they live, you have no conditions, God. Help us to have no conditions for ourselves and for the people around us. God, I pray that you would grow us closer together as a family and ultimately closer towards you. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen.